first of all, keep your hands up in front of you. Never swan dive for a single leg, because unless it's an amateur wrestling, they're just going to take your face off with a knee. So always keep your hands up. Do some kind of distraction up here. When you go for the single leg, your lead leg goes to the outside. Your head goes to the inside here. Okay? Don't reach down here. You'll never get his leg off the ground. You may eventually want his heel, but don't go for it off the bat because you'll, you'll never be strong enough to pull that up. So my head goes to the inside. Lead leg goes to the outside. Pull this up here. Now I want his heel planted on my thigh. I can do it one of two ways. Reach down and pull it up, or I can do just a little Elvis technique and plant it that way, okay? His, his heel has to be on my thigh, toes pointing up. From here, I just drop my body weight, my chest, right onto his knee. And it's like an arm bar, or it's like a knee bar. I'm basically doing this to his leg. Either his leg will break or he'll sit down his choice. Head to the inside, lead leg to the outside, here, okay? Either reach down, pick it up, or just swivel your leg. Once his heel is planted on my thigh, I drop all my body weight, just drop my chest right on his knee. If you want to follow that up with an ankle lock, whatever you want to do. Okay, let's try that. They're shooting in, they've got the, the foot where they want it, and they're taking an extra step here, like this. Everybody see what I'm doing? If he's doing this. And it's, in theory, that's great, but I want to eliminate steps. Every step that I add gives him more chance to wiggle out of the technique. Okay, so I'm here, I'm locked tight. I just drop my chest right on his knee. Again, the knee will break or he'll sit down, his choice. Don't this way so you can see me. Duck walk, okay? Front knee goes down before the back leg comes up. Front knee goes down before the back leg comes up here. And when you go for your double leg takedowns, that's what you're doing. Okay? Everybody all the way down, duck walk. The biggest problem most people's double leg takedowns is they start from here. And, and he sees it coming from a mile away. It's, it's probably not going to work. And there's exceptions to every rule. You get these NCAA champion wrestlers, they probably can do it. I can't. Um, usually when you get in any kind of wrestling stance, he's figuring you're going to do a double leg takedown. Just stand still. Sure. Okay? And what he's going to do when I get in this kind of stance is he's going to try and stop me by, by pushing me off here, just like that. I can't shoot if he's here. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock his arms down as I change levels here. And can everybody see the duck walk? Okay, my front knee goes down. Now my back leg comes up. Okay? So I'm here, close enough to touch. Here. That's my, that's my duck walk. Front knee goes down. Now the back leg comes up. I look up and I lift. You don't have to slam each other because it's your partner's turn next, so you gotta be nice. One more time, close enough to touch. This comes down, I change my levels. My knee goes down, back leg comes up, and I lift. Okay. All right, let's try it. I like to come down here. If his arms are pretty straight, I just post up here, okay? As I duck walk, I look up here. And when I take him down, I don't land in his guard. That's why I want to lift. Most double legs, you see people just shooting right through the person and ending up here. Well, he might be pretty good from here, so avoid it, okay? Post up, shoot in, come up. Don't land in the guard. Okay, let's try that a couple times. And we, this year, assaults on officers, which hasn't been too high, luckily, but I think 80% of the assaults on officers, the bad guy tackled them, okay, where it used to just be they punched them. Now they're tackling them. Bad guys are learning how to grapple. So I'm going to teach you how to sprawl. Um, if he takes me down, I land in the guard, I can fight from there. But you don't always want to be on the ground, especially if there's associates. Even if you're on top on the ground, they're going to put the boots to you. So you don't always want to go down and you want to avoid it. When he shoots in, I sprawl. My legs out, double leg, shoot in. I get my, my legs out of his reach. Put all my body weight on the back of his neck. If this is cement, he gets a little cement poison. I can get out of there or I can continue the ground fight, your choice. Okay, what I want everybody to do, I'm standing on a line. I'm just going to put my belt on that line, nice and easy. 
Okay, you get your legs back out of their reach. Belt goes right on their head. Here. Okay, have to get in a line and strike. Okay, again, he shoots in nice and easy. Here. Get your feet out of his completely out of their reach and fight from here. Okay, let's try that. Thank you. If I take him down, I can immediately put a shin here to stop him from rolling away. And then I go for a submission. The other way is to follow him to the ground. Okay? I attack. Uh, I fall him to the ground. And what I did just now is a sprawl. Don't make noise when I'm throwing you. I, <laughs> I sprawled as I took him down. When he was just about here, I did this. And you don't have to land on each other. You can land on your forearm like this and not hurt each other because it's their turn next. OK? Whatever throw you do, I'm just doing Taitoshi nice and slow. As he goes over, I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm on my toes and my chest. And I'm on my elbow, so I'm not hurting Steve. Because he's not as tough as he looks. So yeah, <laughs> right here. One more time. Right here. OK, again, I'm not really hurting him. But from here, you've given him a little cement poisoning. And your submissions are right here. You don't have to go far to look for them. Let's try it. Take it easy on each other. Think about the other finish, so we'll do that. I was going to do that later, but I'll think of something else for later. Um, on the throw itself, you don't want to be facing this way. You want to be facing this way. You just wind, you pull his arm past the center line of your own body. And he's going he's to go down. Okay, if you don't do that, if you're pulling his arm straight ahead, he might just land right on top of you. You don't want that. So this winds, and you, and you turn your head and look this way. Okay? The grip doesn't really matter. You can grab here. You may not have a gi. Okay, I do this if he doesn't have a gi a lot of times, which is a real brutal landing. But the grip's not, that, not as important as pulling this arm across your body and locking him tight to you. If you're doing this, it's not going to work. Okay, So I, I lock him tight to me here. And then I throw. OK? The other finish is when I remain standing, this shin goes right here. The shin that's closest to his legs stops him from rolling away from me. Arm bar. Hook right here. So right shin, right hook right here. Many, most people do this. And he's sweaty. He's going to slip away. If I'm here, he's not going anywhere. Another mistake, not mistake, something I like my students to eliminate is stepping over the body. It's telling him what you're doing. It's giving him more time to escape. This is all you need. Shin, hook, squeeze the knees. 45 degree angle here. OK? If I'm 90 degree angle, he's got good bicep strength. Girl, 45 degree angle, bicep strength. OK, so you eliminate his bicep strength. With Steven, you have to do that. He's huge. Okay. Here, shin to the ribs, hook, squeeze the knees. 45 degree angle, raise your fulcrum off the ground. Lever, fulcrum. Here. One more time. Shin, hook, squeeze the knees, 45 degree angle, slide down the lever, raise the fulcrum. Let's try. I mentioned here, it stops him from rolling away. This I hook because if he's sweaty, I'm going to lose my grip. There's another reason for that. If I fall back like this, I can accidentally break his arm. 
I fall back, crack. Okay, you hurt your partner, you don't have anybody to train with. So, two reasons. One, I'm not gonna lose my grip. Two, I'm not gonna accidentally hurt him. Squeeze my knees. As I roll, I could roll back as hard as I want. I don't hurt his arm. Now I slide down the lever, raise the fulcrum. Okay, try a couple more times. Now and then maybe one or two more in the next session. Um, one thing he might do, once I come here and I hook this, he can no longer roll away from me. He can't go anywhere. So he might decide to roll back into me. When he does, I just trap the arm here. Take Juji on the other side. Again, 45 degree angle here. Okay? Stay down. We just landed here. I hook. He's decided he can't roll away from me, so he tries to roll in, go nice and slow. As he does, I slap this down and hook it here. The hand that's closest to my head, I'm trapping with the hands closest to the legs. The opposite hand, as that comes, I slap it down and trap it here. Now this shin goes to this ribs. Okay. So from the top, okay, take him down, go for the arm bar, he rolls into me, take the other arm. Let's try it. When I was doing juji this side, I hook. Again, if I'm here, he'll slip away or I'll hurt him accidentally. So it's a hook. When he rolls into me, go ahead and roll into me, it's a hook again. Some of you are doing this. You have your hook here, then when he rolls into you, you're trying to grab his wrist. No. I got my hook here, he rolls into me. I just slap it down and hook here. Shin to the ribs, 45 degree angle. Okay? The other mistake I see, some people are trying to do it from here. Roll into me. How am I gonna reach his arm? Okay, so I've gotta, gotta be here. Gotta be down here. He rolls into me. He just, he does all the work. I just put my shin here, roll back. Okay? Um, if the technique doesn't work, is there a chance of that? Sure. <laughs> if, if I'm here and he rolls into me and I don't get it, sprawl. Okay? Let's try it. <laughs> the hook. Okay. If I'm going this side, another reason for the hook. I mentioned, you know, you don't lose your grip and you don't hurt your partner. It's one more thing I failed to mention. This is what pulls me, my hips under his shoulder. Okay. A lot of times I see people going for arm bars and they sit far like this. Okay. His elbow goes right into my groin, which doesn't make my day. And I'm not going to get the arm bar from here. This hook pulls me in tight. I squeeze my knees right up just, where, just below his shoulder. Now when I sit back, look how close I am to him. That's where you need to be. Squeeze tight, work your way down the lever, raise the fulcrum. Okay? If I go the other arm, if I'm here, he rolls into me, same thing with the hook. As I put my shin to the ribs, I pull myself with this hook right under his shoulder. Here. Okay, let's try a couple more times. Okay. Um, the reason you have to squeeze these knees so tight, if I don't and I roll back, he's up on, on top of me. Okay? Even when you do squeeze the knees tight, sometimes that's going to be his defense. When I come back, he's going to sit up. Okay? When he does, just keep going all the way to your hip this way. Harder to do in slow motion. But the hip that's closest to his head, on your back, the hip that's closest to his head, my left hip, 
when he goes belly down, when he goes belly down, I just go with him and I go all the way under that left hip. See all the room I have to, to get my submission? A lot of people stay down here on their stomach and they try and get the submission. They're their own enemy. Come all the way to this hip, keep the knees tight. I got all this way to raise this arm. Here, okay? So one more time. We're here and you can start from the top, standing, whatever you want to do. As I start to go, he comes, he sits up. Just roll with him all the way to the opposite hip. And this